Welcome to Read It Once Again's Literacy Curriculum Units, Module 9. In this module, you'll learn how to administer the Read It Once Again curriculum-based assessment, assess the results, and use information to guide instruction. Each skill-based question will be discussed along with sample activities from a variety of Read It Once Again units explaining how to teach the skill. The assessment tool consists of 20 questions, each relating to the Super 20 foundational skills. The visual graphic cards are contained in a display binder, allowing the administrator of the test to easily flip pages. This assessment tool will assess the child's current language skills, facilitate beginning conversations between speech therapists, teachers, and parents, helping them to work as a team by sharing assessment tool results, use the test results to inform teacher therapist instruction, assess child's progress at the end of the year, identify when children are ready for Read It Once Again Level 2 units or other curriculums designed for typically developing children. When and how often should this assessment be administered? Use this assessment as a pretest to determine and guide instruction. Use as often as necessary to identify which skills are mastered and which skills need to be taught. Use this assessment as a post-test to record progress to determine whether the child should continue with Level 1 units or if they are ready to move on to Level 2 units or other developmentally appropriate curriculums. These are some of the Level 2 curriculums that are available based on our Soaring 20 Level 2 foundational skills. They require children to have mastered our Super 20 Level 1 foundational skills. See our Level 2 matrix found in Appendix A for a complete list of Level 2 units. What do we mean by other preschool curriculums designed for typically developing children? Here are just a few examples of the well-known and effective curriculums that meet the needs of typically developing preschoolers. This is your curriculum-based assessment recording form. Each curriculum-based assessment comes with 25 recording forms to enter data and score results. Additional packs of 25 recording forms can be purchased separately. This is page 1 of your recording form. It allows you to report the statistical information about each child. Many times vital information provided by the examiner's observation about the child's behavior and circumstance surrounding the experience is an important piece of the total assessment. Page 1 of the recording form provides space for the assessor to take notes to be shared with teachers, therapists, and parents. The test is divided into two parts. Part 1 includes items 1 through 15. The second page of the recording form includes items 1 through 7. The items are scored with a simple yes or no indication, rather than using the negative terms of pass or fail. This recording form is intended to be used at an IEP meeting or any time that you want to share information with teachers, therapists, or parents. Visual cues matching the pictures found in the actual curriculum assessment guide are included on the recording form to help others have a better understanding of the skills being assessed. This is page 3 of your recording form. It still assesses part 1 and includes items 8 through 15. The child needs to score 12 of 15, or 80%, on Part 1 to continue on to Part 2. This is page 4 of your recording form. This begins Part 2, which includes 5 tests, items 16 through 20. The child needs to score 4 out of 5, or 80%. Children who score 12 of 15 on Part 1 and 4 of 5 on Part 2 are demonstrating developmentally appropriate language skills and are ready to begin participating in Level 2 Read It Once Again activities. They may also be ready to participate in other preschool curriculums that require developmentally appropriate language skills. Children who score below 12 out of 15 on Part 1 and below 4 out of 5 on Part 2 should continue to participate in the Level 1 Read It Once Again curriculum. Part 1 skills 1 through 15 are found inside the green box. They must score 12 out of 15 correctly to continue with Part 2. Part 2 skills are found in the red box. They must score 4 out of 5 correctly to pass on to the Read It Once Again Level 2 units or other curriculums designed for typically developing children. 
The time needed to administer the test should be approximately 20 minutes. However, when screening a young child with very limited language, you may need only a few minutes before they reach a point where they are unable to proceed. Choose a quiet setting with minimal distractions. The examiner should be very familiar with the test items before using the assessment. It is also helpful if the examiner is familiar with the child. It is natural for the examiner to unconsciously give visual prompts or cues. The curriculum assessment tool will guide the examiner with written text to help ensure that the questions are presented consistently for each child. This supports the accuracy of this assessment. Each assessment question provides you with a rationale. The rationale will give you an in-depth understanding of the skills being assessed. Reading and understanding the rationale for each test item will help the examiner to better administer this test, interpret child responses, and determine appropriate instruction. Let's take a closer look at each assessment question along with some activities found in the Level 1 Read It Once Again units that provide opportunities to practice the skills. Within the sample activities provided, we have tiered the goals to include differentiated levels of instruction. Here's a simple way to classify how Read It Once Again tiers the level of instruction in order of acquiring information and difficulty. Matching, Visual Discrimination, Sorting, Visual Discrimination, Point 2, Recognize, Receptive Language, Name, Identify, Expressive Language. The assessment assesses the highest level of the skill, which is most often the use of expressive language. You are now ready to examine the Read It Once Again curriculum-based assessment page by page. Each skill addressed in this assessment will be followed by some examples of activities taken from the Read It Once Again units that will help you to teach the skill. Set up your curriculum-based assessment turning to the first picture of the Bluebird. For each question, the child will see only the visual cue. On every reverse side of each test item, the assessor will consistently be given this information. Assessment question, visual prompt, instructions, teacher says, child correct response. The rationale for each skill, reading and understanding the rationale for each test item, will help the examiner to better administer the test, interpret child responses, and determine appropriate instruction. Let's begin with the first assessment skill where the child is shown a picture of a bird. For the purpose of this training, we're going to put the child's visual prompt, or the bird, on the same slide as the assessor's instruction. On this first instruction page, you will see that this is the beginning of Part 1 that will include questions 1 through 15. It is not necessary to ask the child all 15 questions if they fail 5 or more questions in a row. On every instruction page, you will find the assessment question or skill being assessed, label objects. Visual prompt, a picture of a bird. Instructions, present the picture with the bird. Teacher says, what's this? Child correct response, the child says bird. Rationale, label objects. This item assesses the child's ability to name an object. A child's ability to name objects is a critical beginning skill in the development of oral language. Other critical foundational skills will build on this. Here are some of the units we'll be pulling activities from that will help children practice the skills being assessed. This first activity for labeling objects is found in the unit based on the Very Hungry Caterpillar. The first item requiring a child to name an object in the curriculum-based assessment gives credit only for expressive verbal response, but there are many stages leading up to this accomplishment. This lesson plan is broken down into many levels. First, we begin with the actual object where the child has the opportunity to touch, taste, or smell the apple. The teacher repeats the name of the object and asks the child to point to an apple. This is an example of receptive language. The next level of difficulty is to match the actual object with a picture. The last step is for the child to independently name the picture. It is common to have children functioning at a variety of different language levels in one group. 
Some will be learning at a receptive language level, while others are ready to master the expressive. The objects or picture props used may be the same in the large group setting. It is the responsibility of the teacher to know each of his or her student language levels and direct the activity and skill to meet the individual needs of each student at the receptive or expressive language level. This is another activity taken from our unit based on Big Red Barn. There is an activity found in every unit that helps children label objects. Notice that this activity is found in the gross motor section and is a good reminder that language skills are found in every domain of our units. The animals and sequencing cards can be used to create an obstacle course where children need to follow the path and name the animals to get to the barn. Sharing this activity with your physical therapist incorporates language with their gross motor goals. This activity from If You Give a Mouse a Cookie uses the sequencing cards. The goal for this activity is to use the cards to sequence the story using the graphics provided. Before a child can sequence, they must be able to identify and label objects. Just as in the Very Hungry Caterpillar labeling activity, you may need to break this activity down into concrete level A to make sure that students have receptively mastered identifying objects, and then proceed to level B where they are able to match objects and pictures, and then finally introduce the concept of sequencing. Being able to label objects is the first step to sequencing. This activity is found in the unit One Duck Stuck. It is a fine motor activity, but these simple lacing cards are perfect for helping children name and label animals found in the story. Share this activity with your occupational therapist who will reinforce labeling objects while working on lacing skills. The second skill assessed in the curriculum-based assessment is to repeat a four-word sentence. The child will see no visual cue on the page facing them, only a large empty frame. The assessor says, I like to play, then says to the child, now you say it. In the correct response, the child repeats all four words, I like to play. The test item is assessing the child's ability to hear a series of words one time and be able to repeat them in order. Being able to repeat a familiar phrase is the prerequisite skill to the skill being assessed in this test item. This test item requires the child to repeat a four-word sentence that has not been practiced and is not recognized by the child as a familiar phrase. This butterfly activity found in the speech and language section of the Very Hungry Caterpillar encourages children to repeat the phrase, I am a beautiful butterfly. The response to repeating this phrase will vary according to the child's language ability. Some may only be able to point to the butterfly. Others can say the word butterfly or two words. The goal is to repeat the entire phrase independently. A simple way for children to increase the number of spoken words is to add visual cues to familiar songs and rhymes. This activity from the Big Red Barn uses the song Old MacDonald Had a Farm. The child begins to build this skill by participating in singing the song by filling in the animal name and animal sounds. The words and phrases are repeated throughout the month with the goal of having the child repeat the words and phrases independently. Look for games in all units that encourage children to repeat words and strengthen their vocabulary. This activity is based on the story, If You Give a Mouse a Cookie, and is found in the Socialization section. The story, One Duck Stuck, contains fun text with lots of rhyming words and phrases. This activity, found in the Speech and Language section, uses a sand and water table where they can create muck so that the child can practice repeating the word duck, muck, or phrases like duck stuck, duck stays stuck, or deep in the muck. The third skill found in the curriculum-based assessment is sequencing. The visual prompts are pictures showing toothpaste on a toothbrush, girl brushing teeth, toothbrush without toothpaste. Instructions are, teacher says, I'm going to tell you a story about a little girl. First she gets her toothbrush, then she puts toothpaste on her toothbrush, finally she brushes her teeth. The teacher says, look at the picture. Then says, point to what happened first. Pause and wait for the child's response. 
Then the teacher says, point to what happened next. Pause and wait for the child's response. Then say, point to what happened last. The child's correct response is the child will point to the pictures in this order. Toothbrush without toothpaste. Toothbrush with toothpaste. Girl brushing teeth. This item assesses the child's ability to understand and organize visual information into a logical sequence. Expressive language is not being assessed in this item. The goal of this activity from the Very Hungry Caterpillar is for the child to use his or her memory skills to predict or sequence what comes next in the life cycle of a butterfly. Every Mother Goose rhyme found in each Read It Once Again unit uses sequencing cards to help children predict and sequence familiar words and phrases. The Mother Goose rhyme found in the unit for the Big Red Barn is Mary Had a Little Lamb. The difference between sequencing and retelling a story is the use of visual cues. This sequencing activity is found in the gross motor section of If You Give a Mouse a Cookie. It uses the sequencing cards found in the speech and language section. First, you create an obstacle course placing the sequencing cards in order to tell the story. Then have the children put on their mouse headbands. Templates to create a mouse headband are included. Tell the children that they're going to pretend to be the mouse. The child begins to build this skill by walking the path of sequenced cards. In the beginning, it is helpful to match the pictured pages in the book to the sequencing cards. Remember that some children are only matching the pictures and naming pictures. This is a beginning step to sequencing. The fourth skill found in the curriculum-based assessment is visual discrimination. The visual prompt is a picture of the letters R, P, K. On the assessor's instruction page, you will see a large letter K. The instructions are, present the picture with the R, P, K and allow the child to look at each letter. Now hold up the assessor's instruction page to allow the child to see the single letter K. As you hold up this page, point to the letter K and say, touch the one that looks the same as mine. The child's correct response, the child touches the letter K, the child does not have to say the letter K to pass the item, they only need to point to the one that looks the same. The rationale, this item assesses the child's ability to recognize two figures that look the same. Expressive language is not being assessed in this item. Even though visual discrimination does not require expressive language, it is an important skill to master for a child to acquire expressive speech and reading skills. The first example of a visual discrimination activity is a sample of a puzzle. Puzzles are found in each of the Level 1 units and use familiar graphics found in the story. This butterfly is found in the cognitive section of the unit, The Very Hungry Caterpillar. The image is cut into four pieces and there is an empty template for the child to help correctly assemble the puzzle. This visual discrimination activity from Big Red Barn requires the children to match patterns on the pails. The goal in this activity from If You Give a Mouse a Cookie in the cognitive section requires a child to use their visual discrimination skills to match the same colored straw to the same colored cup. Consider this question. If Matthew matches the colored straw with the glass with 100% accuracy, does that mean that Matthew knows his colors? The correct answer is no. This only means that Matthew has good visual discrimination skills. If you ask Matthew to point to a different color as you name them, then you know that he knows his colors receptively. If you point to a color and Matthew can correctly name the color, then you know that he has mastered color identification expressively. Pattern matching is a visual discrimination skill. The super snake activity from the unit One Duck Stuck requires children to match patterns on the snakes. The fifth skill assessed is shape identification. The visual prompt is a picture of a square, circle, triangle, and rectangle. The instructions are to present the picture with the shapes. The teacher should touch each shape and ask, what shape is this? The child's correct response is to name all four shapes, square, circle, triangle, rectangle. 
The rationale is shape identification can be tiered into four levels. They are from the easiest to the most difficult. Matches, sorts, recognize or points to, and names. The test item assesses shape identification at the highest level, names, shapes. This test item assesses shapes expressively. Shapes are not typically found in the text of the storybooks used by Read It Once Again. We teach shape identification in every level one unit by linking a shape with a familiar object or character from the story. This shape activity is found in the Very Hungry Caterpillar in the Cognitive section. Always be aware of the individual learning stages of the children in your classroom. Some will use visual discrimination to match or sort. This requires no language. Another child will be able to point to the shape that you name. This is receptive language. The final step is for the child to expressively name each shape. The curriculum-based assessment gives credit for expressive language. In the Big Red Barn, the shapes are inserted into the barn graphic. Shape activities are typically found in the cognitive section of each Level 1 unit. If children have mastered expressively naming the shapes and crave more motivation, you can challenge them by using the word format documents on your color CD and printing the shape words inside each shape. The activity Sponge Shapes in a Bucket from If You Give a Mouse a Cookie places the image of each shape on the picture of a bucket. It is found in the cognitive section. You can easily make this a gross motor activity by using real buckets with pictures of each shape. Cut sponges to match the shape on the pail. Children can toss the sponge in the correct bucket. Add water to the sponge and pails for a good outdoor activity. Shapes get stuck in the muck in the activity found in One Duck Stuck. Always be aware of the individual learning stages of the children in your classroom. Are they matching, pointing to, or naming? The number six assessment question relates to color identification. The visual prompt is a picture of a blue, a yellow, a green, and an orange crayon. The instructions are to present the picture with the colored crayons. The teacher will touch each color and ask, what color is this? In the child's correct response, the child names all four colors, blue, yellow, green, orange. The rationale is color identification can be tiered into four levels. They are the easiest to most difficult. Matches, sorts, recognizes or points to, or names. This test item assesses color identification at the highest level, names, colors. This test item assesses colors expressively. Every level one has at least one color identification activity found in the cognitive section. I Love Ice Cream is from the Very Hungry Caterpillar. Children can match, sort, and name ice cream scoops and cones. Not all color identification activities are in the cognitive section. Here is a tossing game found in the gross motor section for the unit Big Red Barn. Have you ever discovered that your children know how to go, but sometimes have trouble understanding the concept of stop? Every gross motor section of all level 1 units will have a start and stop activity. The teacher places graphics from the story on the floor and begins to play music. The children are encouraged to dance or make gross motor movements along with the music. Suddenly the music stops. When the music stops, the children must find a graphic and stand on the picture. They are encouraged to identify the picture object that they have chosen to stand on. In the story, if you give a mouse a cookie, the graphics selected are the different colored crayons that the mouse used to draw his picture. This activity, intended to be a gross motor activity, can now be used for color identification. What child doesn't enjoy going fishing? In the unit One Duck Stuck, the children have the opportunity to go fishing for colors. Assessment question 7 requires number identification. The visual prompt is a picture of the numbers 2, 5, 7, and 9. The instructions are the assessor presents the picture with the numbers 2, 5, 7, and 9. The teacher touches each number and asks, what number is this? The child's correct response is to name the numbers as 2, 5, 7, and 9. The rationale is, number identification can be tiered into four levels. 
They are from easiest to most difficult. Matches, sorts, recognizes or points to, names. This test item assesses number identification at the highest level, names numbers. This test item assesses numbers expressively. The Very Hungry Caterpillar offers many opportunities for counting the caterpillar's favorite food. In this activity, Fancy Butterflies, found in the Cognitive section, children are asked to match, point to, or name the number to complete the butterfly. This is a good activity to use on your storyboard. The directions for constructing a storyboard are found in Appendix A. Here is another chance to use your storyboard. The activity Count Them, There Are Ten, found in the Big Red Barn Cognitive section, helps children identify numbers 1 through 10. A large nest is placed on the board with numbered eggs to be matched, pointed to, or named. When working with very young children, you can start with just a few eggs, and when working with higher functioning children, it's very easy to add more than 10 eggs. If you give a mouse a cookie, encourages children to identify numbers on a cookie. Your storyboard is a great tool that allows children to participate with hands-on experience. Duck Pond Games, found in the Unit 1 Duck Stuck in the Socialization section, is a fun way to practice number identification in your classroom water table, or it can be used as an outdoor activity. Question number 8 assesses number concepts. The visual prompt is a picture of five blocks. The instructions are to present the picture with five blocks. The teacher says count the blocks then allows time for the child to count the blocks. After the child has counted each block from 1 to 5, pause and ask, how many blocks did you count? The child's correct response is, the child must say 5. The rationale is that this item assesses the ability to answer the question, how many? Many children with limited language skills will learn to count with a one-to-one -one correspondence. You may wish to note if the child was able to count on a one-to-one -one correspondence on your score sheet for additional information about this skill. The more difficult task for children with limited language skills is being able to answer the question, how many, after they have completed the counting task. Credit on this item is given only for answering the question, how many blocks. Five Green and Speckled Frogs is a popular children's song. The number identification and counting song is an activity found in the Level 1 unit, One Duck Stuck, in the Speech and Language section. In the beginning, many children will use one-to-one -one correspondence, which is a rote counting skill while singing the song. One-to-one -one correspondence is a prerequisite skill necessary to answer the question, how many? By now you realize that the activities used to teach the Super 20 foundational skills found in our Level 1 Read It Once Again units are creatively woven into every domain and the activities can address more than one skill. The Caterpillars in a Cocoon Pocket activity, found in the fine motor section of the Very Hungry Caterpillar, is a perfect example. It is designed to practice cutting skills, but it can also be used for color identification or following a three-step direction. In this example, we will use it to reinforce number concepts by asking children to either count the number of caterpillar squares or instruct them to put a specific number of caterpillar squares in the cocoon pocket. Many of the activities that you find in the Read It Once Again units that teach the Super 20 foundational skills are presented in multi-levels designed to ensure that prerequisite concepts are mastered so that the child will be successful at the assessed skill. This activity, Counting Objects on the Farm, Level A, from the unit Big Red Barn, uses actual objects to begin counting. The teacher is directed to begin counting only two objects using one-to-one -one correspondence and advancing to higher levels as the child progresses. We're Going on a Cookie Hunt is a fun activity found in the gross motor section of If You Give a Mouse a Cookie. Hide cookies, real or construction paper, in the classroom. Go on a cookie hunt. Have children put cookies in their cookie bag, bring bags to the circle time, and count the cookies and fill a class cookie jar. The skill assessed in number 9 is to repeat, extend, and predict a pattern. The visual prompt is a picture of a heart and star pattern strip. The instructions are to present the picture of the pattern strip. The teacher says, look at this pattern. Point to each picture and say heart, star, heart, star, heart. 
Tell me what comes next. The child's correct response, the child says star. The rationale, this item requires the child to recognize a given AB pattern and then complete the pattern. The child must say the word star. In the unit Big Red Barn, children are asked to recognize a pattern and match Mama Hen's eggs. The Very Hungry Caterpillar patterning found in the cognitive section requires that a child recognize a pattern and then predict which color comes next. Here is another activity from If You Give a Mouse a Cookie found in the cognitive section. It also requires that a child recognize a pattern and can predict what object will come next. This activity is found in all units, with the graphics changed to match the characters and objects found in that story. This is a good example of how Read It Once Again activities start in the simplest form and provide different levels of difficulty to challenge children's functioning at a variety of levels. This snake necklace found in the unit One Duck Stuck in the Cognitive section requires the child to recognize a repeating pattern and predict what color comes next. It also reinforces fine motor skills. Assessment question number 10 assesses visual memory and is a three-step question. On the first page there is a visual prompt which is a picture of one red chair. The instructions are to present the picture with only the red chair. Point to the chair and say, look at this picture. Now the assessor will flip to the next page which is an empty frame with no visual cues. The purpose of the empty box is to create a 20 second distraction, giving the assessor a chance to sing a simple song such as Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Then flip to the next page. 10C is the final picture used to assess visual memory. The visual prompts are a picture of a ball, key, and a chair. The instructions are to present the picture with a ball, key, and a chair. The teacher says, which picture did I show you? The child's correct response is to point to or name the chair. The rationale? This item assesses the child's short-term visual memory. It is designed to assess what the child remembers seeing, visual memory. Although this skill is not directly related to language development, it is necessary to have when learning to read and write. This cutting grid activity taken from the fine motor section of the Very Hungry Caterpillar can be used to practice visual memory skills. Creating a matching game by duplicating the cutting grid, cutting apart the object squares, and instructing the child to match the pictures. Use your storyboard with this Shapes on a Bucket Level B activity found in the Cognitive section. The child will practice visual memory skills by matching shapes to the correct bucket. Big Red Barn's What's Missing Activity game found in the Cognitive section takes the skill of visual memory to a more difficult level. For example, the child is first shown a picture of the barn with a weather vane. The next page shows a picture with only the barn. The child must use visual memory skills to answer the question, what's missing? As the child becomes more familiar with the animals in the story, One Duck Stuck, the activity Wings, Tails, Feet, and Antlers, found in the cognitive section, requires them to use their visual memory skills to match the body part to the appropriate animal. This rhyming sample trial activity is not intended to be scored. It is used only as an example to introduce the skill of rhyming to ensure they understand the directions. The visual prompt is a picture of a tree. The instructions are, present the picture with the tree. The teacher says, this is a tree. The word tree rhymes with these words, B, knee, key, C, three, flee, or me. No need for a child's response. Flip to the next page. The rhyming assessment question is not a trial and should be scored. The visual prompt is a picture of a cat. Instructions are to present the picture with the cat and point to the cat. The teacher says, this is a cat. Can you tell me a word that rhymes with cat? If the child responds with a word that rhymes, then say, that's right. Can you tell me another word that rhymes with cat? The child's correct response is, they must say two words that rhyme with cat, including made-up nonsense words, 
Some possible choices are bat, fat, flat, hat, mat, that, pat, rat, sat, splat, scat, vat. The rationale? Rhyming can be assessed at two different levels. Receptively, the child hears two words and can tell you if they rhyme. Expressively, the child hears one word and can tell you other words that rhyme with the given word. This test item assesses rhyming expressively. Many of the stories that Read It Once Again uses have rhyming words found in the text. This is helpful for children to receptively identify the rhyming words and familiarize them with the concept of rhyming. While you're reading books with rhyming text, keep these goals in mind. The child will repeat rhyming words from the text of the story. The child will hear and identify two words that rhyme as the story is being read. And the child will fill in a word that rhymes with a given word from the story. Here are some examples of storybooks Read It Once Again uses that provide rhyming text. Every Level 1 unit contains a Music and Rhyme tab. A Mother Goose Rhyme is the first featured rhyme in this section. Each unit contains a different Mother Goose Rhyme. This full-page rebus, taken from the unit from the Very Hungry Caterpillar, was designed to be sent home to parents and caregivers after the child is familiar with the pictures and phrases. It encourages parents to repeat Mother Goose rhymes with their children. Mother Goose is an extremely powerful tool that uses repetition, rhyme, and rhythm to reinforce speech patterns and language concepts. This is a fun rhyme found in the daily living section of If You Give a Mouse a Cookie. Rhymes and the reinforcement of rhyming words are found in all domains of each unit. There are many rhymes that include movement in the gross motor section. This butterfly colors activity found in the gross motor section of the Very Hungry Caterpillar is a good example. It is especially effective if you're able to include your physical therapist with your group. This simple activity could also reinforce color identification, object identification, abstract concepts, and following directions. Assessment question number 12 assesses the concept of big and little. The visual prompt is a picture with a big bear and a little bear. The instructions are to present the picture of the big and little bears. The teacher says, I have two different sized bears. Point to the big bear and say, this bear is blank. Point to the little bear and say, this bear is blank. The child's correct response is that the child will name the first bear as big and the second bear as little, or appropriate size synonyms. The rationale? This skill can be assessed at two different levels. Receptively, the child points to big and little objects or child sorts objects by their size, big or little. Expressively, the child uses the words big and little to describe the object. This test item assesses the skill expressively. An activity from the Very Hungry Caterpillar Level A found in the Speech and Language section uses actual big and little objects named in the story. Provide a big box and a little box. The child can sort, point to, or name the objects as big or little and put them into the appropriate box. Every Level 1 unit has a big and little Level B activity found in the Speech and Language section. The graphics are changed to be appropriate for each story. Big Marsh, Little Marsh, Level B, found in the Speech and Language section of One Duck Stuck, uses animals found in the marsh. The child will sort, point to, or name objects as being big or little before placing them on the appropriate grid. Curriculum-based assessment number 13 addresses the concept of same and different. This concept requires two steps to assess the skill. On the first page, 13a, the visual prompt pictures two dogs. The instructions are to present the picture of two dogs and point to each dog. The teacher says, these two pictures are the same. Flip to the next page. The visual prompt is a picture of a duck and a dog. The instructions are to present the picture of the duck and the dog. Point to the duck and the dog. The teacher says, these two pictures are blank. The child's correct response, the child says different, except not the same or any reasonable answer. The rationale, the skill can be assessed at two different levels. 
Receptively, given a set of objects, the child points to the object that is different. Expressively, the child uses the word different to describe or compare objects. This test item assesses the skill expressively. In The Very Hungry Caterpillar, the matching memory game uses the two sets of sequencing cards found in the speech and language section. Use your storyboard to display sets of objects and have the children identify them as being same or different. The child can receptively point to the objects that are the same. The next level of accomplishment is for the child to describe the objects using the word same or different. Every level one unit contains an activity for children to practice which one is different. In the Big Red Barn, the missing weather vane is found in the cognitive section. Children can point to the objects that are the same or different. The ultimate goal is for the child to verbally use the words same and different to describe the objects. The unit One Duck Stuck provides an activity called Mr. Frog Has Numbers to reinforce the concept of same and different. The child is asked to identify by pointing to or using the words same or different to describe the numbers on the frogs. This classification exercise is a trial activity and should not be scored. The visual prompt is a picture of a jacket, sweater, hat, shoes, pants, and socks. The instructions are to present the card with the articles of clothing. Point to and name jacket, sweater, hat, shoes, pants, and socks. The teacher says these are all kinds of clothes. There is no need for the child's response. Flip to the next page. This classification assessment question should be scored. The visual prompts are a picture of a cow, bear, lion, pig, and horse. The instructions are to present the picture with the bear, horse, lion, pig, and cow. Point to and name the bear, horse, lion, pig, and cow. The teacher says these are all kinds of blank. The correct response by the child is the child says animals. The rationale? The skill can be assessed at two different levels. Receptively, given several categories, the child sorts objects or pictures into the correct category. Expressively, the child is given several objects or pictures and names the category. This test item assesses the skill expressively. What would you use is an activity found in the speech and language section of the unit of If You Give a Mouse a Cookie. The goal of this activity is for the child to be able to identify how an object is used. This is a prerequisite skill for being able to classify objects. In the Very Hungry Caterpillar unit, We Feed the Caterpillar is a game found in the socialization section. Children are learning that all of these objects are food items. Here we are introducing classification with only one category. The Mama and Baby Matching activity found in the Big Red Barn is in the Speech and Language section, and it can be used to help children classify in three different categories. They can identify these as being animals, or they can classify a separate group as being mother animals, or classify another group as baby animals. Here are some props matching the illustration found in the story Clap Your Hands. Hats go here and socks go there is the classification activity found in the cognitive section. The number of props and number of classification boxes you choose will depend on the ability of your students. It helps to add visual cues to the front of the box and you can add sight words for older children. Children are to sort the objects by category and then name the categories. Assessment number 15, which addresses position words, is the last question in part 1. The visual prompt is a picture of a table, cat, mouse, bird, and chair. The instructions are to present the picture with the table, cat, mouse, bird, and chair. The teacher says, where is the cat? The child's correct response is on. Where is the mouse? The child's correct response is under or beneath. Where is the bird? The child's correct response is over or above. Where is the chair? The child's correct response is beside or next to. To receive credit, the child must answer any three out of the four positional concepts or concept synonyms. If the child responds by pointing or saying right there, you may prompt and say, can you tell me where? 
The rationale is that the skill can be assessed at two different levels. Receptively, the child is told where to put an object. Expressively, the child uses position words to tell where the objects are located. This test item assesses a skill expressively. After this question, you have reached the end of Part 1. The child needs to score 12 out of 15 in this section to continue on to Part 2. Can you find the butterfly is a gross motor activity found in the unit for the very hungry caterpillar. You can use this exercise in two different ways depending on the ability level of your students. The child will place the butterfly over, under, beside, next to, in, or out according to the teacher's directions. This is receptive language. The child will use the expressive words of over, under, beside, next to, in, or out to describe where the butterfly is hidden in the classroom. This is expressive language. Gross motor activities provide excellent opportunities to get children up and using their bodies to learn about positional concepts. In the big red barn, the child can imitate the chicken standing over the egg on one leg. This reinforces positional concepts. The egg is under the chicken and the chicken is over the nest. Every level one unit will have a position words file folder game in this format. We change the graphics to match those found in the story. Where's the cookie is the position word grid found in the speech and language section of the unit if you give a mouse a cookie. The child will place the objects over, under, or beside according to the teacher's directions which uses receptive language. The child will say the words of over, under, or beside to describe where the objects are placed which is expressive language. This begins part two of the curriculum based assessment. Questions 16 through 20 assess the child's application and generalization of specific foundational skills 1 through 15. If the child successfully answers four out of the five of these questions, 16 through 20, he or she will have the language skills necessary to participate in Read It Once Again Level 2 units or other curriculums that are designed for typically developing four year old children. Foundational concept number 16 addresses the ability to answer the WH questions. The visual prompt is a picture of a boy at a table eating breakfast. The instructions are to present the picture of the boy eating breakfast. The teacher asks, who is eating breakfast? The child's correct response is a boy or a child or a child's name. Where is the spoon? The child's correct response is in the bowl or in the boy's hand. What is the boy eating? The child's correct response is cereal or a brand name is acceptable. Why is the boy eating breakfast? The child's correct response is he's hungry or it's morning. When do you eat breakfast? The child's correct response is in the morning. The child's correct response criteria is four of the five correct answers. Accept any reasonable response for the questions above. The rationale? This test item assesses the child's ability to answer who, where, what, why, and when questions. Children need good receptive and expressive language skills to be able to answer these kinds of questions. As you read your story, you will find that many children will be at different stages of mastering the Super 20 foundational skills. Some may still be labeling objects, and some are now able to use the sequencing cards successfully, while others are ready to be challenged with answering the WH questions. All these goals can be addressed to meet the individual needs of each child while using the sequencing cards as you read the story. Here are examples of a few of the WH questions from The Very Hungry Caterpillar that you might ask children who are ready to master this skill. Where is the egg? What did the caterpillar eat on Monday? Who turned into a beautiful butterfly? Every Level 1 unit provides a page of suggested WH questions that can be asked as you read the story. The questions are found in the Speech and Language section, and these examples are taken from the Big Red Barn. If you send home a copy of the storybook, this is an excellent activity to include with the story to prompt parents to ask questions as they read with their child. 
whose name is in the cookie jar found in the cognitive section of If You Give the Mouse a Cookie, helps children to recognize their own name and the name of their classmates by answering who and what questions. This game, found in the socialization section of One Duck Stuck, allows the children to role play by asking who, what, and where questions. Who can help? What animal is this? Where are you? Predicting what will happen next is number 17 on the assessment. The visual prompt is a picture of a girl who is making a sandwich. The instructions are to present the picture of the girl who is making a sandwich. The teacher points to the first picture and says, she has two pieces of bread. Then the teacher points to the next picture and says, she next spreads peanut butter on one slice of the bread. Now the teacher points to the third picture and says, then she places the other slice of bread on top of the peanut butter. The teacher asks, what do you think the girl will do next? The child's correct response will be that she eats the sandwich, except any reasonable answer. The rationale is that this item assesses the child's ability to understand a series of actions and be able to predict what they think will happen next. This item assesses the child's receptive and expressive language skills. Use your storyboard to provide visual cues for this rhyme found in the cognitive section of The Very Hungry Caterpillar. It not only reinforces number recognition, but it encourages children to predict what will happen next. After reading the story One Duck Stuck several times, you can use the storytelling cards found in the speech and language section to practice their skills predicting which animal comes next to help the duck. This snack time activity found in the daily living section of If You Give a Mouse a Cookie uses mouse headbands so that the children can pretend to be the mouse. When they are given a cookie, they need to predict what the mouse will ask for next without having any visual cues to prompt them with a correct answer. This activity becomes more difficult because they need to rely on memory skills to predict correctly. Foundational skill number 18 requires a child to follow a three-step direction. The visual prompt is no visual cue, just an empty page with a large empty frame. The instructions, be sure the child listens to all three directions before he or she begins to perform the task. This item assesses the child's receptive language skills. Do not give any visual cues to the child when giving the verbal directions. The teacher says, I'm going to give you three directions. Listen to all three directions and then do each one. Stand up. Touch your nose. Clap your hands. The child's correct response, the child completes all three actions, not necessarily in the order spoken. The rationale, this item assesses the child's ability to hear or process three verbal directions and then be able to perform all three tasks. Be sure the child listens to all three directions before he or she begins to perform the task. This item assesses the child's receptive language skills. Do not give any visual cues to the child when giving the verbal directions. The Very Hungry Caterpillar provides a gross motor activity that requires the child to do the caterpillar wiggle walk by following these auditory directions. Number one, stand up tall. Number two, touch the floor with both hands. Number three, walk your hands forward. Number four, walk your feet forward. Depending on the skills of your children, you can break this down into one-step directions or any combination of one through four directions listed above. In every unit, including the Big Red Barn, children have the opportunity to practice hand-washing skills found in the daily living section. This is a perfect exercise to illustrate how often we are unaware of the number of auditory directions that we give to young children and expect that they can remember and be successful with the task. Breaking the process into fewer steps, teacher demonstration, and adding visual cues can be very helpful. Just about all activities require the child to follow directions. This task is essential if they are to be successful in a four or five-year-old classroom setting. 
in this fine motor activity from if you give a mouse a cookie, the child is given directions for cutting along a one inch line. All level one units contain a pocket activity with a cutting grid providing one inch squares with animals, characters, or objects from the story. Critters in the Marsh, found in the fine motor section of One Duck Stuck, provides teachers with the opportunity to have children follow a variety of directions, such as put one moose, one possum, and one snail in the marsh pocket. Put something green, something blue, something brown in the marsh pocket. Put two moose, one frog, and three ducks in the marsh pocket. Ducky Says is a game similar to Simon Says, found in One Duck Stuck in the socialization section. The teacher has the opportunity to ask the children to follow one, two, or three step directions. Question number 19, which assesses the ability to comprehend abstract concepts, is essential for children to succeed in four- and five-year-old kindergarten classes. The visual prompt is a picture of two horizontal arrows. Instructions are... Present the picture with the two arrows. The teacher says, here are two arrows. One is short and the other is long. Point to each arrow and say, this arrow is blank. This arrow is blank. The child's correct response is long or short. If the child answers big or little, the teacher should prompt, can you give me another word? The correct response is long and short or longer and shorter. Here's the rationale. These are abstract concepts. The skills can be assessed at two different levels. Receptively, the child is asked to point to a picture illustrating the abstract concept long and short. Expressively, the child uses words to describe the concept long and short. This test item assesses the skill expressively. It's surprising where you'll find the opportunity to teach abstract concepts. In the Very Hungry Caterpillar in the Fine Motor section, the teachers will give the instructions to touch the first square. Paste the head on the first square. Touch the last square. Paste the tail on the last square. Children will use their expressive skills to say open when they pull the caterpillar open and closed when the caterpillar is scrunched closed. The Big Red Barn Day or Night activity, found in the Daily Living section, requires the child to describe the graphics according to the activities that are related with the abstract concept of daytime or nighttime. Some sponge fun found in the Daily Living section of If You Give a Mouse a Cookie addresses the abstract concept of wet and dry, empty and full, or in and out. The concepts of small, medium, and large, or big and little, are reinforced in baby frogs and bullfrogs found in the unit One Duck Stuck in the Cognitive section. The final skill addressed in the curriculum-based assessment is number 20, which is the ability to retell a story. This is a two-step question. In 20A, the visual prompts are a picture of a boy bathing, going to bed, reading in bed, and sleeping. The instructions are to present the picture with the boy bathing, going to bed, reading in bed, and sleeping. The teacher will touch each picture and use these simple sentences to describe each one. The boy takes a bath. He gets into bed. The boy reads a book. He goes to sleep. After telling the story and pointing to each picture, flip the page to show the empty frame and no visual cues. In 20B, the visual prompt is no visual cue, a page with a large empty frame. The teacher says, tell me three things that happened in this story. Do not give any prompts. The child's correct possible responses are, the boy took a bath, the boy went to bed, the boy read a book, the boy went to sleep. The child should respond using phrases or sentences. Single word or two word responses are not acceptable except any three reasonable answers that are in the correct sequence. The rationale is that this item assesses the child's ability to recall details from a story in the correct order as well as his or her ability to verbally express that information. This item assesses the child's receptive and expressive language skills. 
Telling a story with a stick is an activity found in the speech and language section of The Very Hungry Caterpillar and is another way of preparing children to sequence using visual cues. The difference between sequencing and retelling a story is the use of visual cues. Sequencing is a prerequisite skill necessary for retelling a story. In every Level 1 unit, the first activity listed after the socialization goals will be one that provides you with a suggested list of props. Here is a list of props based on the unit Big Red Barn. These props have a variety of uses. The teacher can use them during story time or to help children label objects. When props are placed in the dramatic center, children have the opportunity to use them to retell the story. Read It Once Again suggests that when your unit is finished, each child creates a large packet filled with assessment information, samples of activities, and most importantly, a copy of the storybook. It can be a published version or a class-made book created by using sequencing cards with the appropriate text written on each card. The lesson plan for this packet day activity is included at the end of the speech and language section for every level one unit. The purpose of sending home a copy of the story at the end of the unit is to promote reading with parents and caregivers at home. This also creates an opportunity for the child to retell the story. The character necklaces found in the socialization section of Is Your Mama a Llama allows children to take on the role of an animal from the story and is a fun way for children to practice retelling the story. You've completed the Read It Once Again curriculum-based assessment. The purpose of this test is to assess the child's readiness to participate in Read It Once Again Level 2 activities and or preschool curriculums that require developmentally appropriate language skills. Results from this assessment may also be used to guide individual instruction using Read It Once Again Level 1 units. Let's take another look at the scoring of this curriculum-based assessment. Skills 1 through 15 located in the green box are in Part 1. A child must score 12 out of 15 correctly to continue with Part 2. Mastery of items 1 through 15 provide the foundation for receptive and expressive language skills needed to begin working toward mastering of items 16 through 20. Without mastering skills 1 through 15, the child will not have the receptive or expressive language necessary to be successful with items 16 through 20. Part 2 skills 16 through 20 are found in the red box. The child must score 4 out of 5 correctly to pass this assessment. There are three options for teachers to use after they have determined the child's assessment results. One, identify which skills are mastered and which skills need to be taught. If the child did not master 12 of the first 15, continue with level 1 units. Choose appropriate activities from the units. 2. The child masters 12 or more on Part 1 of the assessment, but did not master 4 of 5 skills in Part 2. Continue with Level 1. Choose activities from Level 1 units and emphasize the high-level thinking skills in those activities. 3. The child masters 80% of Part 1 and Part 2. They are ready to move on to the Read It Once Again Level 2 units. When we compare the Super 20 Level 1 foundational skills to the Soaring 20 Level 2 foundational skills, you will see that the last five questions in the Super 20 foundational skills are the gateway to Kindergarten Readiness foundational skills. This assessment, along with our literary units, will help you better meet the needs of your students. Use the results from this assessment tool to determine your child's language level. Use the language level to determine which skills to teach and how to teach them. Congratulations! You've completed Read It Once Again's curriculum-based assessment training, Module 9. And you are now ready to advance to Module 10. Now I see what you mean. Using visual cues to implement class management and prevent behavior issues. This ends Module 9.